I'm Tony Arps and I'm the project director. Uh, every federal agency has an OSDEBU office and what the OSDEBU office does, it advocates for small businesses and assists them in be a, being a part of these federal procurement opportunities. So the Department of Transportation has it, the uh, Department of Defense has it. So my office, we are, we're located in Dallas. There's 11 offices, field offices, regional field offices. I cover Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Louisiana. Uh, can we just get a, can we go around and just find out what we have and who's in the room? We'll start with right here. I am Trina Mullins. I work for ODOT. I'm the ADA coordinator there. Okay. Jenny Chong, I work for ODOT as well, and I um, handle Title VII and Title VI. I'm Michelle Whittington, and ODOT, and I work, um, I'm a contract compliance officer. Okay. Lamont Martin, I'm with ODOT. Ransom with the Small Business Administration. I'm a lender relations specialist. Jenny Robbins, I work at Ramsey Title, part of the Oklahoma Business <coughs> Network. Just across, uh, President uh, Gregory Science Technology, I'm a blogger. Someone here, and I work at ODOT, and this is my boss. <laughs> I work for Wilma. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Okay. Well, let me just say the, the, the program I'm talking about is it's specific to transportation. And to utilize this, and I'll talk about it later in the presentation, you must have a DOT contract. But when I'm giving this presentation, I'm usually giving it to a lot of different uh, contractors and business owners that are working different uh, federal agencies. And so even though this product may not apply to them, uh, their agency could be something coming along down the way because this is a product that came out um, a few years back because of, of course, we know our economic, the economic crunch and the crash of 2008. So let me just dive into this. As Greg mentioned and I mentioned earlier, uh, our office, what we do is advocate on behalf of small businesses with different procurement opportunities, financial assistance, and I mentioned all the field offices we have. Uh, one of the things that, that we're finding now with, with, with the different offices that we work with is that when it comes to transportation, there's a lot of different resource partners out there, but a lot of them may not know transportation. And what we find is that the civil side in transportation is totally different than any other businesses. So we find that here with the Small Business Transportation Resource Center, when it comes to civil transportation and these major products, we are wanting to be the place to go. The short-term loan guarantee, we all know what happened in 2008. You want to have a guess what happened in 2008? We had the financial meltdown. And what it did, it changed the way everyone run their business, especially contractors. Before 2008, when it came to financing, there wasn't a lot of restrictions. The paperwork wasn't as intensive. But once we had the financial crisis in 2008, everything's changed. Uh, you hear a lot of, lots of times contractors and business owners are saying, well, they won't loan any money. Well, sometimes they really can't right now because there are various regulations that keeps them from doing this. And so DOT came up with the short-term lending program as another way to give small contractors access to capital. What we do is we use a number of different partners resource partners such as certain banks to assist us in this program. Uh, one of the banks we use is East West Bank. But what DOT has found is that the CDFIs work better. Uh, have you ever heard of, heard of Axion Texas? Axion Texas, there's a company called People Fund. They're community development financial institutions. Now, sometimes when you mention this to contractors, the first thing they'll say is, oh, Tony, I've been there. They charge 18% interest. Well, they go by the guidelines that DOT has. So the DOT guidelines, and I'll talk later about that, allows them only to charge a certain percent of interest. So it's still very competitive and a very good rate that contracts have access to capital. What the loan program does, it, re it gives a revolving line of credit 
strictly just a line of credit. The primary collateral is the receivable from the contract for the projects. Uh, participants can be getting this renewed for up to five years. Now, that second bullet, when I say it's primary receivable, it's contract, anyone want to guess what the first thing that comes to mind? Factoring. Factoring. And that's what I have to dispel because this is not factoring. It's a line of credit. However, you use the receivable as the collateral. Now, if you have a contract or you have a factoring agreement for $1,000 for one month, they're going to charge you anywhere from 25 to 3%, right? So let's just say, if, keep it simple, say $1,000, they're going to charge you 3%. Where's my math at? That's what, $300? So if you need that money today, you give a factor, a receivable, $300 is due at the end of the month. And of course with factoring, if that invoice is not paid again, it's another 300, maybe a little per half percent more. Okay, take that same $1,000, get it today, on a line of credit at 6%, that's $60 a year, divided by 12, $5. So at the end of the month, if you pay that receivable back, once you get it from the uh, prime contractor, it costs you $6. Big difference between $300 and $6 because what you are charged here with this agreement is a line of credit, so what you're paying is a 2% above prime. With the factoring agreement, you're paying a fee. Big difference, so I like to dispel that off the bat. The other thing, um, Sometimes you'll have some, you have any surety people in the room? We don't have any surety people in the room, do we? Okay. Well, usually when a surety, when they're, um, when they're giving a contractor uh, a bond and they have an addendum by it, if something goes wrong, what they have to go after is the company. And of course, everyone knows receivable is very, that's what's there. So sometimes you might need a, uh, sometimes get a little resistance from some surety people because they don't quite understand this program, okay? So even if you're a bonded contractor, you can still use the short-term lending program because the surety company cannot keep you from utilizing resources in your company. So that's something I like to really hit. The maximum loan amount is $750,000. Believe it or not, we have some companies have a $750,000 line of credit. I have two companies that they have a $750,000 line of credit. Now that's not to say that when you apply for this loan, you want a $750,000 line of credit you can get a line of credit based on your needs and the bank and the contractor will determine what they need. Because keep in mind also, you pay for that line of credit. There are some fees involved with that line of credit. You could be at any tier. You could be a first tier sub, second tier sub, third tier sub. And that's real important because as these projects have gotten larger, I know in Dallas we have billion dollar projects. We have some large primes or subs. So a lot of the smaller contractors could find themselves second and third tier subs. So we know then how, how soon they'll be paid. So we know that if you're prime with ODOT, text dot, they have to pay you, right? They pay you pretty quick. But then you have the prime, that first tier sub, you probably have a 30 day agreement with him and he has to pay you. And then you have the second tier sub and going on down the line. Well, if you're a third tier sub, uh, can you imagine what probably going to happen if you're waiting once you turn that invoice and you're waiting to get paid. Now that's not to say that happens with every project, but we're finding a lot of our small subs are third and fourth tier subs. So what's happening is they're being paid 45, 60, 90 days out because there's a human in that process. There's someone that you've given the invoice to. There's something that you didn't, you didn't uh, properly fill out. The documentation is not right. So if I'm down here and there's people up here and there's two humans here, the likelihood of it getting slowed down is, is very likely. So even though the process should take about 45 days, it ended up taking 120 days. So it's, it's very important. This product really com comes into, program comes really important when it comes to those uh, subs that are second and third tier. There's an application fee, $150, that you gotta pay to the bank, uh, like anything else. Uh, that shows a bit of interest in the program, lets you know you can you're committed to doing something. This is the interest rate I talked about earlier. It's, that's pretty close now. I think it's about 3, 325, 3.25 is the interest rate. And then the lender charges plus 2%. So if, you, if you're with a lender that uh, alternative financing or a lender that charges normally 16%, uh, 
if you're in this program and they participate in this program, they can only charge you 5.25%. Okay, so we have lenders like that. Hello, yes. Good question. Uh, like most loans, a lot of times you're, re you're able to roll the fees into the loan. In this program, you can't. You have to pay for that up front. The other thing, there's another fee involved. Let me mention that. <clears throat> when you get the loan, <clears throat> there is a fee from the bank, like any other line of credit fee. Most of the time, you're able to take that and roll it into no. You have to pay that up front. So if the fee for the line of credit is $100,000, it's like $1,000 the contractor must come with that thousand dollars up front before he gets access to that line of credit. It can't be rolled into when I get my first payout. So that, that's a very good question. Because those are things we like to answer up front because there have been some miscommunication. Uh, you're thinking that, oh, my closing costs for all any of that stuff maybe is rolled into the loan. In this case, no, they have to pay that up front and it's not rolled into the loan. These are the uh, different uh, type of businesses that are eligible for the program. Uh, the 8A program is eligible, hub zone, disabled veterans, service disabled veterans. Uh, but you must have a transportation related contract, meaning that it must have DOT funds. There must be uh, some type of funds. If there's a dollar, it's probably just a DOT contract. So anything that, ha that is transportation related. Must be current on federal taxes. Uh, that's something that, that's so important. It's uh, when you're talking to contractors, you need to really ask them that. You could be in a workout agreement, but really ask them that, because I can't tell you how often you do all that work and at the end of the day you find out that there's a tax issue, no matter how big or how small it is. It can really slow things up. These are different activities that they can use the, uh, the money for. Maintenance, rehabilitation, restructuring, revalidation, payroll, uh, again, it can be used on any, any transportation mode, be it public, commercial, federal, state, or local. Now, I've said that it's DOT, and so I know we have a lot of DOT people here, but uh, we all understand that many times there's a lot of pass-through money going to a lot of municipalities. So sometimes you have contractors out there that may have a contract with uh, the Oklahoma City, and there are some federal dollars which may require some type of DBE requirement or in, in reference to this program I'm speaking of, they can use that contract to get, the, to get a line of credit. They can't be used for mobilization, equipment purchases, any long-term use, uh, no financing of existing debt, and uh, payment of non-current taxes, and no distribution for payments. So you can't get this and like, hey, the dividend that we promised you last month, here it is. You can't do that if you got a corporation and you got some dividends pending. This is a checklist, and I won't go over this in detail, but basically these are just some of the things that, that's required. These are uh, documentation that most banks require, such as the financial statements, personal uh, financial statements, work in progress, aging, cash flow, certification, business formation document. One thing I will say, when you're talking to anyone about the program, like the current DB certification and the business formation, the way it works, is that if a contractor wants to participate in this program and they feel like they're working, on, they're working on a contract that has federal dollars, what they usually do, they'll contact our office and then sometimes they'll contact the bank because some of our banks are going out there marketing the program as well. First thing I say you want to do is make certain their certification is in date, make certain they're certified, uh, and make certain that the project they're working on has DOT funds. Uh, I had one example of a company that was doing work on a, on a, on a, they were doing work for a federal, for some federal work with one of the transportation agencies and they ended up doing some other work on another project and that project was state dollars. And so they kind of almost assumed that since I'm working there and they do, they've done mostly nothing but federal work, there had some, uh, some DOT dollars there and we ended up doing a lot of paperwork, come to find out there was no, uh, there's no federal dollars there. Okay, because a lot of, a lot of the, uh, because of the, the issue we're having with the growth we're having now, a lot of the different uh, governments like your county, your city, they're getting real creative with how they finance in things. Uh, in Dallas, we have a transit system called DART. They have a project that's using nothing but state and local funds. Can you believe that? 
transportation projects, state and local funds, and another, there's, a, there's, a, there's 3P is a, the, uh, another partnership there too. So it's not just all federal. When you look at it, you think, oh, that's the FTA. There's, there's federal dollars on that. When in actuality, there's not any federal dollars on it at all. In fact, it doesn't even have a DBE goal. MWE goal is the only goal it has on it. So make certain that they are certified. Make certain that they, uh, they have, uh, the, pro the project has federal dollars. And usually you can contact myself or someone with the DOT and find out if it's federal dollars on it. This is just some of the other things. Uh, this is the company history. Uh, completed contracts. This is another thing that, that's important. Uh, they need to have had some project history. Now, don't say no off the bat about how many projects. Usually they look at about three to four projects, but if they've had one or two projects, let's still let us take a look at it. But usually we want some project history before they get this. Resume on all operating officers. As I mentioned earlier, um, the guidelines for this loan is the same as most, most banks, meaning that if there's an owner that owns over 20% of the company, he must submit financials. Um, sometimes uh, I find my contractors want to do it their way. You know, they're not involved in the business and you know, they own a little part of it, but the truth is you get all this paperwork together, you find out that, hey, I need a financial statement, personal financial from one of the partners. And that is the part that really slows things down. You have the owner, he can get his financials together, but then you have the other partners there, they're still thinking about whether or not they're going to release their financials, why should they have to do it. And then of course, if, you know, if you're married, it's a partnership, so now you have to get all that financial information. So uh, that slows the process down. So if you talk to a contractor, they need to understand that we will get the res resumes as well as the financial net worth of all the officers over 20% in the company. And of course at the bottom we have to have a transportation related contract. These are just as uh, Greg mentioned earlier, these are some of the things we're doing, different training, counseling, bonding assistance. We do a lot of um, uh, technical assistance but our main focus now is on building capacity and bonding, okay, uh, and the short-term lending program, because that's where uh, contractors need the most help. Uh, in this civil work, Greg can probably attest to this, this is not a sidewalk these guys be working on. And it's not a sidewalk, it's not a church parking lot, it's a DOT. I had to, uh, my wife, she was wondering about to my construction because she had uncles in construction and I, I would tell her some of the things I do and it didn't really dawn on her the risk involved and the requirement to do this type of work till we were going, I was on a, the tollway and we have a quote called a high five and one night these guys were working on the high five. I mean they were way up there. I said, you see that? That's why this stuff is risky. That's why it requires a lot of expertise. This is just not, again, this is not doing a sidewalk. So that project history is, is, is just so important and it's so important that when I have a, a contractor come into my office and tell me they want to work on some of these projects, it's a matter of are you ready for that? Because again, it's very capital intensive. And this program here, that's why it's really a, a great program. It's one we're really pushing. Because I tell contractors and other business people, believe it or not, you are a creditor. And something they look at me like, what? You are a creditor. You're doing work on credit. You're out there doing the work, expecting to get paid in 30, 60, 90 days. Okay? You expect it in 30, but you're probably going to get it paid in 90 days. So you are a creditor, so you have to think in that mode. So you must have the resources to be able to fund those projects, fund the payroll, buy the materials. Because we all know our prime contractors. They have to do the same thing, and they're passing it right down to you. And hey, this, in this environment, we all have to be big. That's my information. Uh, Victoria gave, me, gave you my, uh, my PowerPoint presentation, and all of that in the, in the back of it, how it can be reached. Uh, that's myself, Michael Lugo, and then there's Deanna Flores. She's executive director. Again, we have three of us, and we really uh, are pushing and assisting contractors with building capacity. And since I do have ODOT people here, uh, keep in mind, uh, we help, we assist these contractors, but you have a lot of them that want to grow real fast. 
They want to like, hey, I, I got a million dollars, now I want to do five million. Well, you don't do that in this industry that fast. And that's one of the things I do is just try and let them know you can't grow like that. Uh, you need a couple of things. You need to get more expertise and you need capital. So I'm gonna help you get the capital, but that don't mean you get a $100,000 line of credit. Now you can go out and get a, a project three times the size of what you had. And that's, uh, that's the short-term lending program. Eighty-five percent, eighty-five percent, and it varies with the different partners because what uh, there's different lenders um, that come on board, and so that's worked out between the lender relations with them. It varies. Uh, right now, we have East West Bank. They work mostly in Texas. We're still working on a lender. In fact, I'm thinking they're going to be here today. There's a lender in Oklahoma that's going to be um, involved in this program. Again, initially we're going after banks large banks, but now we find the CDFIs are better because they understand small contractors. They're not as intimidating. Uh, we just had a lender come on board in New Mexico and it's called the Plan Fund and they work with contractors. They already have about four contractors that they're loaning money to and they say, great, we can help them more so now. Because understanding this business, keep in mind, construction, the accounting, the working progress, all of that is totally different. So if I'm a loan officer and I don't do any construction loans, I know they have underwriters, but you know, you don't, you only work with what you know. So a lot of times it has to do with the banks I tell contractors is, it's just that they're not familiar with this industry and the accounting and everything is totally different. So we found that the CDFIs are real good about working with the contractors. They're not intimidating. Uh, sometimes it can, be, it can be intimidating for contractors and trying to get loans because they've been told no so many times, you know, Here's another no, but with the CDFIs, uh, they're able to assist them. If not with this program, there's some other programs they can help them with in reference to getting funding. Do you have a feel for the um, success and failure rate of the paybacks? I, there's, there was one contract that I, that I, when I was in D.C., I was talking to some people that there was an issue about the slow payback. I'm not sure if it was whether or not they didn't pay it back. It could have been that the uh, the prime contractor or the first tier sub that that uh, the invoice was for it could be they was just had financial difficulty and it wasn't paid so keep in mind that that line of credit if it's not paid you have to pay interest on it each time each month but keep in mind since it's a line of credit the, it could be extended out and the contract would be paying just interest on that line of credit. So he's just paying interest on the line of credit for those three or four months that it's outstanding. But there will come a point where a bank will determine that that loan is non-performing. In fact, I mentioned earlier about sometimes banks uh, can't lend money because they got regulations. So when the bank examiners come in there and they look and they find out this is not a performing loan, why is it in this category? So there may, will come a point where that loan has to be considered non-performing. But to my knowledge, uh, there's a one had difficulty. I can't think of anyone that had a had a default on it. That being said, I guess my time's up. Thank you.